This daily grind, I need one wine. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. Every day of my life is such a grind. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast, and today we're going to be starting to break down uh, Acts chapter 16, and uh, it's basically covering Paul's second missionary journey, and uh, if you want to, you can Google a map and take a look at that. It's, it's very interesting as you go through the book, and you go back and you look at the map as you're going through uh, uh, Acts chapter 16 and seeing how... Uh, Paul wanted to go to certain places, but the Holy Spirit wouldn't allow him to go, and so he would change gears and, and decide to go elsewhere. And and it's so interesting to see. And when and, and when you uh, go into the details of Acts chapter sixteen, uh, it, it's really fascinating, and you can kind of see some of the reasons why maybe that the Holy Spirit did not allow Paul to go into Asia Minor or northward up into Bithynia and places like that, and and how. He directed him to go on uh, to places like uh, Macedonia. Um, and so if you want to Google a map and take a look at that as you go through Acts chapter 16, that would be awesome. It's very interesting, as I said. But you know, after after the church began in, uh, in Acts chapter 2, the church stayed there in Jerusalem for quite some time. And, and it wasn't until persecution that it, it leaves Jerusalem and goes to other places like Samaria and Judea and even beyond, and uh, this, you know, there would be uh, some big challenges for the church pretty early on uh, because the Gentiles, as the church spread throughout uh, the region and throughout the area, uh, the Gentiles were beginning to hear the gospel. And of course, in Acts chapter 10, when God gives Peter the vision and Peter goes to Cornelius' house and the Holy Spirit falls, on the Gentiles there in Cornelius' house, God is saying to Peter and to the Jews, the the Gentiles are now welcomed into the church and, and, and they are to be reached for the gospel's sake and they can have the opportunity to be saved. And, and so the Gentiles begin hearing the message about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and they're coming to Christ and, and they're being converted. And so this would be a huge challenge for the early church because uh, just being completely honest, the Jews and the Gentiles were not the best of friends. And another issue is which we uh, covered in last chapter in Acts chapter 15 was the Gentiles were not circumcised. And uh, the Jews going all the way back to Genesis 17 had a covenant with God that if you wanted to be uh, if you wanted to be in good graces with God, then you had to be circumcised. And so uh, back in Acts chapter 15, you know, some Jewish believers had gone around to some of the Gentile churches and told them that if they wanted to be saved, they also had to be circumcised. And so these issues were brought before uh, the apostles and the elders at the church of Jerusalem. And they tackled this issue and they came up with these four things for the Gentiles to do. And they, they wrote this out in a letter and they had Paul and, and Barnabas and, and, and some other delegates that they chose to take this letter that said that you should abstain from eating food offered to idols and abstain from sexual immorality and abstain from eating the meat of strangled animals and to abstain from consuming blood. All four of these things would have something to do with how uh, the Gentiles worshipped false gods and, and how they sacrificed to these false gods. And so they have, the, the elders at the church of Jerusalem, along with the apostles, have come to this agreement that the Gentiles do not have to be circumcised to be saved. And so they would put this in letter form and they would send it out amongst these Gentile churches. And that's basically what Paul and, and Barnabas, even though they're going to go their separate ways, that is their mission is to go back and revisit these churches and, and to encourage them with this news from the apostles and the elders at the church at Jerusalem. Now, 
at the end of Acts 15, Paul and Barnabas are, are going to decide to go on another trip, like I said, to, to visit these churches to, that they have started. Uh, they want to see how they're doing. They want to encourage them to keep going in the faith. And they want to share uh, this letter that, uh, that they have uh, gotten from the apostles at the church in Jerusalem. And, and so Barnabas wanted to take John Mark, his cousin. And if you remember, John Mark had deserted them. Uh, right before they had gone into uh, Syria to preach the gospel. And so Paul was upset with John Mark, and he didn't think that would be a good idea for them to carry John Mark along with them. But Barnabas wanted to give him a second chance. And it got so heated, their argument got so heated, that they decided that they're going to separate and go their separate ways. And even though they could still do the work of the gospel, and even though they could still be friends or whatever, uh, they decided to part ways, and Barnabas is going to take John Mark and Paul is going to take Silas with him. And, and, you know, as exciting as this opportunity would be for Silas, I'm just thinking that Silas doesn't really understand what he's getting himself into because Paul has already been chased from city to city and he's also been stoned. And in my opinion, and many other opinions, that he died from that stoning and was resurrected from the dead. So I... Just in my opinion, and I wasn't there, so I don't know, but I just don't realize, I don't think Silas realized that what he was signing up for, but it, you know, nonetheless, it would have been awesome. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last time that we hear about Barnabas. You know, it's kind of like a Western movie. He just, he just rides off into the sunset and uh, maybe for uh, maybe the reason is that, uh, that Luke doesn't mention Barnabas anymore is because Luke is the author of the book of Acts, and at some point, and we'll see this here in chapter 16, he actually starts to travel with Paul. And so, therefore, he is, he is writing his letter from his very own personal viewpoint. And since he is traveling around with Paul, he's telling Paul's side uh, of the story. And so, just because we don't hear about Barnabas anymore, it doesn't mean that Barnabas isn't important. Barnabas did a lot of great things, including uh, he, he was that bridge that bridged that gap between the early church and, and, and Saul when, when he was converted in Acts chapter 9, when he was the one persecuting Christians, taking men and women and putting them in prison, and many of them would be killed for their faith. The, when he was convert, when he had that conversion experience on the road to Damascus, and he had to go before Ananias, and Ananias prayed for him, and Saul received his sight, and Jesus told him what his will was for Saul. He told him, he said, "You're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. You're going, you're going to bear my name before the the Gentiles." And and, and so uh, the church then was when when Saul shows up to Jerusalem. The Christians there are scared to death of this man. And so it was Barnabas then that bridged that gap between Paul and uh, the early church. Um, and it was also Barnabas when the, the church there in Antioch, Assyria was started and it was doing so well. The, it was Barnabas that was sent by the apostles of Jerusalem to go and check on the church there in Antioch. And Barnabas made the decision on his own to go to Tarsus and get Saul, and he literally brought Saul back with him to uh, Antioch of Syria, and they stayed there for about a year helping the church there at Antioch of Syria. Um, it was Barnabas who, you know, who traveled around with Saul, now called Paul, literally putting his life on the line with Paul for the sake of the gospel. And so, you know, because like I said a while ago, people would chase Paul and Barnabas from city to city, trying to kill them and wreaking havoc in their lives for spreading the message about Jesus. Um, and so he literally risked his life for the gospel's sake, along with Paul. Uh, Barnabas' real name is Joseph, and he was given the nickname Barnabas, which uh, by the apostles, which means the son of encouragement. And, you know, if you think about it, we as Christian people who have put Christ on in baptism, who are living for Jesus, we actually could be more like Barnabas. You know, 
Barnabas is, may be in the background, if you will. Uh, they may ride off into the sunset and they n never may be heard of or from again, but they're still working to encourage others to give their life to Christ and encouraging Christian people to keep the faith when life challenges comes their way. And so, as I said, this is the last time, if I'm not mistaken, that we hear from Barnabas, but that does not mean that Barnabas is any less than a Christian or a less of a, a, a worker for the Lord than Paul is. He is just going his separate ways because of this argument that they've had, but he's still going around encouraging people. He's still going around telling people about Jesus, and he's going around literally putting his life on the line for the sake of the kingdom so that people can be saved so that people could be encouraged to keep on keeping on and so he lives up to his name barnabas the son of encouragement and we could take a great lesson from barnabas and that we could be people who encourage others in their walk with christ we can be people who encourage others to put on christ to give their lives to jesus christ and when we come back from break we're going to start digging in to Acts chapter 16. We'll be right back. This is Bruce Stott, one of the elders at Partnership Christian Church, and I want to invite you and your family to worship with us this coming Sunday. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube for service times and directions. Thanks for listening to Grind It Podcast. Keep grinding. So Acts chapter 16 begins with Paul and Silas in Derby and Lystra. They're starting what we call Paul's second missionary journey. And basically what they're going to do at the beginning is go visit some of the churches that Paul and Barnabas had started in these different towns. And so they travel to Derby and then they travel to Lystra, which is amazing to me because Lystra is the very place where Paul was stoned for preaching the gospel. So much hurt was put on this man. And like I said, I believe that he died from the stoning because that's why that's why they stoned people was to kill them. Um, but he just got up like nothing ever happened, and the next day he started a sixty mile an hour, uh, sixty mile trip to Derby, and so he visits Derby first, and then he comes to Lystra, the place where that he was stoned. But Luke doesn't even mention anything uh, about Paul being stoned there at Lystra, but instead. He focuses on a young man that we're introduced to who was highly thought of among the believers in Lystra, and his name is Timothy. Timothy would be a huge asset to Paul and to the church. He's, he's going to be a leader, and he's going to really be uh, kind of like Paul's right-hand man later on down the road. Uh, a great asset, like I said, for Paul and the church. Now, if you remember... I started this podcast off talking about how the Jews and the Gentiles, they really, they weren't the best of friends. They didn't get along very well. And I also talked about circumcision uh, just a little bit, uh, covered it extensively in the last podcast. Uh, but it, it, Luke's going to make a point to let his readers know here that Timothy's mom was a Jewish believer and that his dad was a Greek, meaning Timothy would not be circumcised. And so uh, could this be an issue for Paul? Well, Paul thought about that ahead of time, and he's going to do something that, that's going to break down any kind of barrier that would be in the way. You know, you know, Paul is carrying around a letter from the apostles and from the elders from the church of Jerusalem stating that Gentiles don't have to be circumcised to be saved. But this was an issue with the Jews for, uh, it's been an issue with the Jews for a long time in the early church. And that's one of the reasons why these Jews are chasing Paul around from city to city and trying to kill him because he, he, is, he is taking their idea of how to worship God, which is Judaism. And it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And Paul saying, and, and Paul was a Pharisee himself. He knew the law like the back of his hand. And now he has this letter stating that Gentiles don't have to be circumcised to be saved. And so the, the Jews, they really hated 
Paul for his message and, and, and what he is telling these people about if you want to get to God, you got to go through Jesus and you don't have to be circumcised to do that. So they hated him and they, they wanted him dead. And so to, to erase any barrier that might be standing in the way of, of Paul being able to preach to Jews and Gentiles and share with them the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, Paul does something interesting here with Timothy. He has Timothy circumcised. And if you think about it, Paul's habit was when he visited, uh, when he went from city to city, the first thing that he would, would do was to go visit a synagogue, especially with it being on the Sabbath day. He knew that Jews and Greeks who had uh, been converted to Judaism who wanted to worship God, he knew that they would be gathered there at the synagogue to worship. And so his he, he basically had a captive audience. And so he would go to these places knowing these people were hungry for the Word of God and, and to want to know more about God. And so Paul would pop in there and share some scripture and then start telling these people about the Son of God and how they had crucified the very Messiah that they've been looking for for hundreds of years. And so if they have, if Paul and Silas have a, 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 a Timothy with them, this young man whose father is Greek, and, and see here's the thing about Timothy. Luke says that Timothy is known, his parents are well known all throughout the area. And so they would know that Paul's dad was a Greek and they would know uh, that Timothy's uh, dad was a Greek and they would know that Timothy was not circumcised. Therefore, if, if they know that Timothy's not circumcised, the first question they're going to ask Paul is what about Timothy? Has he been converted to Christ? Is he following God? Has And their question would be specifically, is he circumcised? And if Paul says no, well, that's going to close every door that Paul has to share the gospel with these Jews. And so he, he left that door open. He did, he did a wise thing by having Timothy circumcised because when, these, when he would go to these synagogues and he would go to these Jews and he would want to preach Jesus to them and the first thing they ask is, is this, this kid here whose dad's a Greek, is he circumcised? And Paul would say, yes, he's been circumcised. He loves God. He wants to serve God. By the way, since he does that, let me tell you about this God that he's serving one and what God has done for him and his family. And so Paul, would, he, he just re erased any barrier that would keep him from uh, uh, telling these people about Jesus. One thing that I want to point out before moving on is that we know where Timothy uh, got his faith from. And it wasn't from the local youth pastor. It wasn't from the church's youth minister or even the local church. It was, it was from his grandmother and his mother. When Paul was going around visiting these churches uh, and, and established this relationship with Timothy, later on down the road, he, before he dies, he's going to write two letters to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, Paul writes this. He says, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. So somewhere down the line, somehow, some way, Timothy's grandmother Lois heard the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and she decided that she needed to give her life to Jesus if she wanted to go to heaven, and she did so. And then evidently, she must have passed it on to her daughter Eunice, which was Timothy's mom, because Eunice gives her life to Jesus. And so you have a grandmother and a mother who are strong in the faith. And so that is where these two women have been a good godly example to Timothy. And so Paul saying, hey, you know, check out your grandmother, check out your mom and, and, and look at their faith and how strong it is. And I know that same faith is strong in you, Timothy. 
He would have got his faith from two godly women who were living examples before him. Uh, we know that his dad was a Greek, as we uh, just took a look at it just a few minutes ago. And, you know, I can kind of relate to Timothy because my mom was a, a, and is a Christian lady who always made sure that her kids were in church. Uh, before my dad had uh, committed suicide when I was three years old, uh, he used to be an alcoholic and he got saved and, and he worked with the church, started uh, a bus ministry. I think they had up to seven buses at one point and he was bussing in kids from all over my hometown. But, but uh, you know, he left my mom hanging to raise three kids all on her own. And her faith never wavered. As a matter of fact, it got stronger. And, and I can remember many a times hearing my mom pray for me and my brother and my sister. She would continually uh, lift us up before the Lord on a daily basis. And, and I heard her by accident. It ain't like I was just you know walking around listening for my mom to pray. But I would hear her praying on behalf of her children. And, and so we, we would see her example, and we would be in church, and we would hear the message. But when I was 11 years old, my sister shared the, the gospel with me, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And she said, this is what you need to, need to do to be saved. You need to believe in Jesus and give your life to, to Christ. And that's exactly what I did. And so ever since I was 11 years old, I've been as faithful to God as, as I possibly can be. Now, doesn't mean that I haven't made mistakes because I make bad decisions because I'm human. But I'm still filled with God's Holy Spirit and I still continue to walk with Christ to the best of my ability. And I'm so thankful for His grace and His mercy. And I hope that Paul, like he says about Timothy, I hope that he says that he could see uh, God's, uh, God working in me or that my faith is strong uh, as well. And I hope my friends and family could say the same thing about me and i hope that people can say the same thing about you that you walk with christ and that you are strong in the faith and that you are being a, a great example of jesus christ for the sake of the gospel and giving people the opportunity to be saved you know as we end this podcast i just want to give a, a shout out to all the women out there who give their lives for the gospel's sake, who take their time to share the gospel with their children, but not only with their children, but all of our children. For you know, like for example, right now, uh, many churches are having what we call vacation Bible schools. And I would dare say that 80 to 90 percent of the workers at these vacation Bible schools are women. And the percentage may be even more than that, you know, because we men, we, we drop, when it comes to sharing our faith or, or I, I hate to say this like this, but doing church work, uh, we drop the ball and, and, and we leave it up to the women and the women step up to the plate and they make sure that the job is done and they share their faith. They, they share Jesus with the young people and I'm so grateful and so thankful for you women who step up to the plate and share your faith. May God bless you richly. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the women who do what you do in the Lord's church into the service of the kingdom of our God. And it is my prayer that God richly blesses you and your family for everything you do in the kingdom of God. Your reward will be absolutely fantastic when you get to heaven. I know you're tired. I know you're wore out from it all. But keep the faith. Keep grinding. Share your faith with others. Keep up the good work. And you will be richly blessed by our Heavenly Father. I know it. You know it. And that's what keeps you going. God bless you, women, for all that you do. We'll pick up with Acts chapter 16 in the next podcast. God bless you, and keep grinding. 
Thank you for joining us today on the Grind It Podcast. Please feel free to share this podcast with your friends and your family so that they too can be encouraged by the power of God's Word. If you have any comments or questions, just email them to thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. Remember, keep grinding and God bless you.